Welcome back to Awful Movie Reviews. After the massive success of Steven Spielberg's Jaws, we saw rip-off after rip-off. Films that tried to cash in on the success of the previous movie. We've seen in later years movies like Piranha, Orca the Killer Whale, or Alligator. But this week, we're reviewing Devilfish. And this does come from the devil itself. One needs to be brave in order to sit through this one. Now the first well, thing to know is that this is part of a long string of cheap Italian horror movies that were used in English for the American market. In fact, director Lombardo Bravo had previously worked on films like Planet of the Vampires, Demons, and the cult classic Cannibal Holocaust. But I wonder what happened there, because this is one of the most inept monster movies I've ever seen. The movie does follow the Jarmula quite a bit. We get a string of mysterious deaths around a small coastal town. Which catches the attention of anyone but the sheriff of the town himself. Accident or could she have committed suicide? Huh? I think that's up to you to decide. Yeah, right on. I think I'll decide on murder. Oh yeah, sure, let's just go with any random theory. That should do the trick. But it does get the attention of a dolphin trainer, a marine biologist, and an electrician who go out hunting for whatever has caused all these gory deaths. And this is where the film gets even worse. First of all, our titular devilfish or monster shark doesn't appear very much, or you only get a very close up glimpse of it. And that's when it actually decides to show itself. Because we get many POV Jaws-like scenes which are supposed to build up an anticipation. But here, it's a total bore because it takes forever. This is one slow-ass, incompetent monster. And then, when the monster is just about to get to the surface, he decides to leave. And he does that several times throughout the movie. 15, he's... It's turning. Damn it! It's going away! It turned! It's diving! It's going down! The worst part of the movie was the editing. It was absolutely terrible. It'll sometimes cut from one scene to the other, even though there aren't many, very many relations between them. It's sort of like random, and that's not even the worst part. Most of the time, when the creature finally attacks, we still don't get a clear shot of the monster. What we get instead are a bunch of fastly edited, jambled and unclear shots, like these ones right here. Guys, this isn't scary nor intense, but just confusing more than anything. I didn't really know what was happening. When we finally get the special privilege of seeing most part of the monster, the animatronics still look cartoonish and laughable. But the movie has got a secret plot twist. I see you finally discovered the truth, Dr. West. Let's say my suspicions are now confirmed. However, I'd like to know why you persisted in spite of my opposition. Yes, folks, this whole creature was actually man-made. And why? But why create such a monster? What better way to protect an exploitable area than a marine monster almost indestructible? Well, when I learned about that, my jaw dropped. So in order to protect a very resource-rich zone, instead of just claiming the land in a judicial manner, you create a giant killer fish that kills anyone that dares to get close to it. Well, these scientists are really determined. In fact, they are so determined to keep that giant killer fish a secret that they will murder anyone who tries to expose that secret. Like if no one otherwise would have ever noticed it. The two main characters also happen to be dickheads, because while they do go monster hunting, they decide to make love on a beach while the rest of their crew is getting attacked and killed by the creature. What were they thinking? Approximately 320 years ago, new forms of fish developed. Fish with teeth. And among them was the Dynictus, a deadly predator that measured over 20 feet long. The Chronosaurus descended from this species and thrived in the Jurassic period. Slide, please. This is the Tylosaurus, another awesome predator. It appeared at the beginning of the Cetaceous period, about 120 million years ago. So, basically, this is a prehistoric fish, which is younger than guys like Gutenberg or Galileo. 
and it's the ancestor of a more recent fish, which itself was around about hundreds of millions of years ago. Well, gee, I'm happy that she traveled all the way down to Florida just to tell us that. This is like if you made a Jaws movie on a low budget with a piss poor script and then shat on it like 10 times in a row. What an awful movie. Ugh.